Day eight in the Kyler Yust double murder trial, but it's day two for the defense to make their case that Yust is not responsible for the deaths of Kara Kapetsky and Jessica Runyans. Those deaths taking place more than 10 years apart. And today, as 41 Action reporter Andres Gutierrez explains, attorneys brought in experts to highlight potential flaws in this investigation. Since opening statements, attorneys for Kyler Use have cast doubt over the investigation into the disappearances of Kara Kapetsky and Jessica Runyans. A former homicide detective in the nation's capital, James Tradum, told jurors on Tuesday he doesn't believe Use got a fair shake from the beginning because of all the publicity. One, there was a lot of more, even more pressure on the police to solve this thing, so rush to judgment, um, skipping maybe some of the investigative steps that you should have taken, uh, accepting certain versions of events, even though they didn't check out things along that line. He also believes the attention tainted possible witnesses. Are they choosing to modify their testimony because they think it might help uh, the police or the family. Sometimes it even impacts their memory. During cross-examination, the prosecution used their line of questioning to remind the jury as to what happened and why they're here. You know, I mean, I don't disagree with you about certain things with this, Mr. Tranum, but the reality is you want the jury to think that this was just a irrationally suspect-driven investigation, but in reality, that man sitting right over there was the prime suspect because he had a history of abusing Kara. Later in the day, the defense team called on a forensic anthropologist to explain. There was little documentation on what tools were used. And to take issue with the ones used at the site where the girl's remains were found. You never want to use a leaf rake because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be displacing whatever is on the origin site to begin with. Possibly missing key evidence like a tiny bone that was never recovered that could have determined whether a strangulation occurred, but another witness noted there was one apparent blood stain on the bottom sole of the left shoe, and two more blood stains were discovered on Yusuf's tank top. Miss Blackwell, there's no way to know whether these shoes you tested, the shirt, um, the jeans, were the shoes, shirt, jeans that the defendant had on the night that Jessica Runyon's was killed. Is there? Correct. These were taken uh, from him on September 11th. When he was arrested. Correct. Of the more than one dozen witnesses expected on Tuesday, almost half got cut. The judge ruled they weren't reliable or didn't have a direct connection to this case. On Wednesday, jurors may hear from KCPD officer Joshua Meyer, who conducted his own independent investigation as a way to help family, despite being told by supervisors to stop. In Harrisonville, Andres Gutierrez, 41 Action News. Looking ahead to tomorrow, additional members of KCPD may be called to testify, but the defense is expected to rest its case by the end of the day. It's still unclear if Eust himself will take the stand. You can follow along with what's happening in the courtroom as it happens. You can do so by following our live blog for updates at KSHB.com.